Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Engadget Podcast live stream. I'm Deputy Editor Sherlyn Lowe, and joining me today is my guest co-host, oh, wrong side, Jess Condit, uh, Senior Reporter Jess Condit. Hey, Jess, thanks for joining us. Hello, happy to be here. I yeah, love it. Talk. You look <laughs> incredible, as always. Uh, in between the two of us is podcast producer Ben Elman. Hey, Ben. Hello. Uh, thanks for bearing with our last minute change in time. For those of you who are regulars, uh, today we just uh, had a sort of situation with the uh, with our original guest co-host, which was going to be Matt Smith. We all hope he's doing fine and he seems like he's okay. So, you know, send good vibes. Uh, mm -hmm. In the meantime, you know, since we already started a little late, let's get moving. Now, for those of you who are new to this, what you're watching now is a behind the scenes look at the recording of the Engadget podcast, which is an audio only show that goes out on platforms like Spotify, SoundCloud, etc. Um, and so during parts of it, we will be like in recording mode where we can't really talk directly to those of you in the live chat, um, but we will be taking breaks in between segments to answer your questions. So leave them in the YouTube chat. Uh, our producer, Ben, will be keeping an eye out and, you know, docking some of these questions. Uh, and also, you know, we're only human, so we're going to make mistakes. So if we do, you just see us, you know, make the mistakes and then try to correct them in real time. And I think Ben has one more piece of behind the scenes thing that we need to do. Actually, two pieces of behind the scenes stuff. So mm -hmm. um, it is after 11 a.m. Eastern, so I can mention it on YouTube, right? Sure. The, that, rather that one piece of news. A... I, it, I just want to put that one. We piece can talk of news about this the during the episode. I feel like, but okay. okay. Is, is this a surprise? N yes, well, no. Yes. Uh, I I just want to put that one piece of news in other news. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the last thing that we're gonna do is something that stream regulars are familiar with. We're going to sync all at once. So Jess, can you just double, triple check for me that you are recording and that you're like getting sound from your mic and everything? Yep, definitely. I see it. Okay, excellent. All right, so if everyone has their recording started on Audacity or anything, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna count down from three. At the end of three, me and Sherlyn and Jess and anyone in the chat is all going to clap. We're gonna sync up and then we're gonna do maybe five or 10 seconds of silence. That helps me with like nerdy audio stuff. And then we're going to get into the actual episode. So we're gonna count down from three, everybody get ready to clap. Three. Two, one, and I'll let you know when silence is over. Silence is over. Um, and before we start the podcast proper, thanks to everyone that's shown up. We've got the return of regular Mark Dell and other regulars like Chris Angelo Perez, Buddy Three Hundred Five Love, Jonathan Tran, D Man, uh, Seven Eight Nine Five, Dude Name Charlie. Um, thanks for all the concern. Declan Flynn was here earlier today too. A lot of people have great thoughts about your Playdate review, Just, and I can't wait to talk a little bit more about it. So yes. let's go right into the episode. Everybody ready? Think so. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Engadget podcast. I am Deputy Editor Sherlyn Lowe, and joining me today as guest co host is senior reporter Jess Condit. Hey, Jess. Hello. Jess is joining us to talk a little bit about this wonderful, magical little gaming console she reviewed <laughs> called the Play Date. I don't know if anyone uh, still hasn't heard of it if you're in the gaming or tech industry. We'll talk a little bit more about that device uh, a little bit later in this episode. But we've got a lot of other news for you. Some updates from Apple. We've got some Netflix news as well. So uh, we've got all of that good stuff this week. But... Before we get to that, if you've been enjoying this show, please make sure to subscribe on your podcast catcher of choice. Leave us a review on iTunes. And uh, we generally do a live recording. 
let me do that again. We generally do a live stream of this podcast recording on Thursday mornings at about 10 a.m. Eastern uh, on the Engadget YouTube channel. We are able to answer your questions live there. So if you have the time, come over and join us. All right, we good? Ben, start play date. Yes, I just had to navigate to unmuting myself. Let's go. Yeah, I had too many windows open is why I was like flubbing. I was like, wait, I'm looking at the wrong screen. <laughs> Anyhow. And I have like right. no notes. So I'm just rolling with whatever you oh, say. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go right I'll I'll lead. We're gonna talk about the play date and then that'll be amazing. Wonderful. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this week, the lovely Jess Condit's review of the Playdate uh, went up on Engadget's uh, website and YouTube channel. If you prefer the written version, it's on our site. If you want to watch the video, it's on our YouTube channel. Jess, can you tell us a little bit more about this device, just like the basic premise of it? Um, it's adorable. That I, think, <laughs> I feel like that's where they started. They said, we want something that can play games, but is also really, really cute. <laughs> and uh, they, hey, they succeeded. I wish I had it with me. So uh, we have uh, we had to shoot the video. So I shipped mm -hmm. it over to Chris in in California. Um, oh. Hopefully, I get it back soon because he's done with the video now. So yay! Um, but yeah, it's it's from Panic, who's the publisher behind Untitled Goose Game and Firewatch, some pretty oh. you know heavy hitter indie titles. And then Teenage Engineering did the design work on this thing, and mm -hmm. it's this little yellow square. I mean, I swear it's like this big yeah. and it, it's, it's, it has a crank on the side. It's a mm -hmm. monochromatic screen, um, pixelated, but densely, <sighs> like densely pixelated, beautiful, yeah. like art in, in that sense. Oh, wow. And it, it just plays a bunch of indie games made specifically for this weird little handheld with a crank on the side. Um, and it, it truly blew my mind. Like I know it's it's hipster as hell. Everyone in the comments like, oh, okay, you have tattoos. Of course you like it. Oh but wow! But I like I honestly I just played with the Steam Deck. You know, I just reviewed the mm -hmm. Steam Deck, and I felt a type of way about it. It was it was fine, right? Like yeah. I I didn't get any like huge like sparks of joy while playing the Steam Deck. I was like, uh -huh. yes, this is a functional machine. There are some issues. There are some positives. It's fine. Mm -hmm. The play date though, when I'm playing with this thing, I just, I'm, I, I'm smiling and I, yeah. I'm not generally into the, the whole smiling <laughs> thing, but. <laughs> oh, you do smile. <laughs> I know, I know. But it's like, it's joyful. It's just this, it's yeah. this little game with a ton of amazing, innovative ideas packed into it already, just Gosh, because yeah. of, of the, the low fi graphics, because of the crane, yeah. all this stuff. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. I, I had the chance to see this in person as well. It's like, uh, when you say it's small, it's like, like about the size of maybe two credit cards, uh, next to each other and like incredibly thin, thinner, like about the thinness of like the Apple TV remote control even mm -hmm. um and then this crank it sort of like tucks neatly away into into the the console itself so like it becomes a very neat square for those of you who are like like me who really need their things to be like very neatly tucked away out of sight sometimes but this the the, pro the thing about that crank right it's like such a unique feature to this device the second i picked this up and i think jess you can attest to this is that like i was like oh is there a fishing game like i feel like the first yeah. thing people want is a fishing game and there is none right not that no not that i know but like yeah ridiculous yeah. fishing the the, I, the iphone game would be amazing yeah. on oh my gosh but, that's just where it starts, right? So yeah, the addition yeah. of the crank, we have regular buttons. Mm -hmm. It's just a D-pad and A and B buttons, classic. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the crank, the crank changes everything. So in my review, I definitely like make a point to say the crank is not a gimmick. The crank okay. on Playdate wow. is a fundamental aspect of yeah. the system, just for exactly the reason you're talking about. This is about rethinking about how we yeah. develop games, about what games can do, about what input yes. methods can do. And just like you said, oh, wow, a fishing game would be great. There are dozens, hundreds of other ideas that developers are now like getting just because they see this crank. They say, oh, wow, what else can I do? I haven't yeah. thought about building a game in this way. Maybe I'll try it. And I yeah. think that bleeds over, that bleeds out from Playdate into the wider industry. This just gets people thinking about games in a new, different way. That's really exciting. Yeah. I really, really like that. 
I so just thinking about that crank alone and the idea of a fishing game, like I can understand why it's not there, even if the the thing is a yet, right? Like if the if the issue is figuring out some things, because why like the screen being what looks like an ink ish like black black and white screen. I'm not sure the actual technology, um, if it's LCD mm -hmm. or or ink, but the crank itself too, it, it moves very smoothly. Like mm -hmm. the level of resistance seemed, at least when I was using it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jess, was that it was fairly uniformly resistant right so if you were to play a game that's like fishing i figured they probably have to have some way to control the level of resistance you get on the crank to give a more mm -hmm. realistic feel to it and that might not even be built into the play date yet and and that could be why i don't know if there's been any official word obviously but this is just me kind of guessing in the behind yeah. the scenes is there a way to tweak the resistance of the crank jess i don't think so i think that would yeah. be a hardware thing and that the hardware is so like we said like so low profile that I yeah. think that would be difficult, but like we've seen, the Vita led to the dual sense, which has reactive adaptive triggers. The the right. tension changes. So, like that idea, we can see where, okay, maybe if we adjust the tension, what else can that lead to? Like, yeah, that's hey, maybe play date two, you can adjust the tension on the on the crank. That would be amazing. Um, but Imagine. so about the screen. Yeah. The yes. screen is um, it's not backlit. It's um, let's see, 200 by 240 i i forget the actual like okay uh, so fairly specs. low res but it's sure. it's one bit it's not yeah. backlit it uses a super reflective um uh, technology to mm -hmm. um to make the screen kind of work in almost any light profile mm -hmm, if mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. if it's absolutely pitch black dark in your room you will not be able to play you will not be able to see yeah. you need just a little silver gotcha. of light and if there's too much light it can get a little dim but honestly mm -hmm. it's like it, it, it was fine. I've played with so, a lot of crappy screens in the past. This was fine. Yeah, <laughs> I, right. I, I feel like so it's, it sounds very e-paper like and, and again, like I have the one time I saw it, it did look like an e-ink or e-paper like screen, which there are a lot of tablets out there that do this now. I think we've seen this specific technology of e-ink, e-paper increase steadily where like it used mm. to be maybe only one FPS was possible. Now it's like we're getting up to 30 to 60 FPS on some of these tablets um and it's it's like someone miniaturized one of these things right and put a put a crank and the d-pad mm -hmm. and the buttons on there what is it yeah. okay so i have two more questions for you and the reason i'm asking all these questions is because i freaking want one so yes. number one Absolutely. how much did it cost and two what's the battery life like okay so um it costs 180 dollars okay i think that's right. pretty fair yeah honestly okay. for for the amount of use i get out of it you just mm -hmm. throw it in your pocket. It fits in girl <sighs> pockets, guys. It's like ah, um, <laughs> like you can just walk out with it. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, so yeah, I think it's a really good a good price for just the amount of use I've already and enjoyment that I've gotten out of it. Um, and then there's also yeah. going to be like a dock that you can like make it a little cube that sits on your desk, and there's a little <gasps> pen in it, and um, and there's also a little purple case. So, mm -hmm. so that's all, that's all amazing. The battery life is mm -hmm. awesome. Um, it has, I, I swear it would last a straight week, if not longer, if you, wow. if you didn't touch yeah. it, if you just left it on, um, yeah. but easily two days with like intermittent play easily two days, yeah. maybe even three it's, wow. um, I think full use, if you're just using it all the way through, maybe like yeah. eight hours, which is fine. <laughs> all yeah. these games are fairly contained, so you don't need a yeah. ton of, it's like, you know, you're chilling in line somewhere and you can just pull it out. It's a conversation right. too. People will be like, oh what the gosh. hell is that? Yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. I I don't really like when strangers talk to me, but I actually could see exactly. like when I want bar. people to talk to me, right? Yeah. Or when I want people to talk to me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> whip it out and be like, here, talk to me. But anyway, is your wingman. Yeah. Exactly. There we go. I needed a wing wing device. Anyway, <laughs> Mark Dell in the chat raises two really good points. One being, yes, it's $180, but if I order now, it's very likely I might be waiting until next year. Yes. And then the very other true. thing that Mark mentioned is that this thing has a headphone chip. Jack. Is that is yes. that true, Jess? Can you confirm? Okay, yes. Yeah, so um, it has a mono speaker built in. It also has a headphone mm -hmm. jack and it has a mic. There's a condenser mic in there, and you can use a, a mic, a stereo in your in your jack. So what would you use the mic for? Are there voice controls or the games? That Maybe. Use? Oh. What an idea. Oh, the world is, like... is open to indie developers <laughs> to play with this game. It, to the, it, this device is amazing. Yeah, it's, it's I very love. Exciting. 
Simple. I love that idea. Uh, and we also had a question from our producer, Ben, who says, how does this thing charge? Is it USB-C or is it a micro USB? Mm -hmm. USB-C. And it comes Good. with a cute little yellow cable that matches the thing. It's great. <laughs> awesome. They did not cheap out because a lot of no. the time with, with devices like this, people like to put in a micro USB-C, which is a micro USB port. So this is great. Um, so what yeah. I was going to move on to really was that like you you do mention that the games that are on there aren't going to take you eight hours to complete. So it seems right. like they're contained. Are they mostly like puzzle games or like things you would there? Is there like a progress, a story arc that you kind of want to go back and finish? Or is it more mm -hmm. like for me when I sit back, I just want to finish a jigsaw. Is it that sort of thing? So like. This is perfect for the overcooked player in you. Like, no oh joke. It, it's a game that you oh can just God. kind of go back to. It doesn't matter where you left off, right? See? You know. Uh, it's you like you it. know me so well. <laughs> like It's like I've known you for years or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's like this is the genres on Playdate already. There, there's yeah. just tons of different games. There, there's yeah. some narrative games. There are some, like, snake games type games since that gauge made oh. an old school like snake game with a little twist Amazing. um there's i mean there's there's side scrollers there's like little pew pew shooters like little shit yeah. <laughs> it's like there's there's everything there's everything yeah and one thing that i actually didn't mention um much in the review is mm -hmm. the ability to side load games anyone yes, yes. can plug this thing into their pc build a game for it sideload it into the device just you just just oh. with your, your cable you, you load it up and then it's available on playdate you can sell games on playdate like it's made for this kind of rapid fire creativity for yeah. it's made for developers to play with ideas test some shit out some stuff out you can say um, shit it's cool I, I don't know man i'm not on here often i i know i'm just getting excited but yeah it's, i it's very i cool. I love that idea um how much like technical expertise would you need sort of to create a game I mean, a fair enough, but nothing, nothing you can't find on YouTube that you can't okay. figure out through Game Maker, RPG Maker. There's a lot, yeah. there are a lot of tools out there nowadays for people who really want to make a game. You can, you can figure it out or you can find someone on Twitter who's tagging oh Playdate and saying, Hey, yeah. I want to make a game. I need a writer. I need a designer team up with people. Yeah. Like that's how, that's, that's how this happens. That is really yeah. cool. And I think that that's what leads to what you're talking about, right? About like people getting inspired by this and therefore potentially building out an entire ecosystem. One uh, of our live stream viewers, Chris Angelo Perez said, Sherlyn, make a cooking mama for the play date. And you know what that crank would be good for is yes. to replicate that stirrer action, yes. the whisk. Oh my gosh. Chris Angelo Perez, like hats off that. What a great, I, I didn't even think about it. All I'm thinking is fishing over here. Maybe, maybe crocheting with that crack. crocheting. Sure. I don't know. Sure. I don't know. That's digging a tunnel. D digging a tunnel with that crank. What else could you use I that bet, crank for? I bet if you made a game that was literally yeah. just digging holes, people oh would love it. No joke. It might be like digging holes in Mythic Quest. Mythic Quest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just a field of dicks. I mean, oh I gosh that yeah uh ttp rule uh so yes. so there you go was uh what else do you want people to know i guess about the play date let's see um teenage engineering obviously designed it so it looks and feels amazing there yeah. are holes in the corners and you can string little charms through them boom Aww. like so when i did the vita video recently i don't know if y'all saw um i'm sure i just did a I thing think. kind of talking about like i want the vita back why did sony kill it and uh, yeah. well, I think that was a mistake um but I really kind of talked up the charm hole on the Vita and Playdate has charm holes so if you needed <laughs> another reason to get it like there you go customize it <laughs> I have another question for you is charm hole the official name of these yes. things oh Absolutely. my god 100 okay no, I don't I have no idea uh, it's just like a little Think. I see. <laughs> I will buy you some things for your charm holes, Jess. Oh there you go. Gosh, don't say that um, on the podcast. <laughs> oh no. Okay, this will oh, be no. our little secret. Oh no. <laughs> this this is really cool. I feel like the the interesting thing too about the play date is that a lot of people, even outside of your typical tech or gaming, you know, silos, are aware and excited for it. 
Um, and that thing that Mark uh, Dell from our chat mentioned about having to probably wait until next year till you get one, just you have an idea of sort of the supply and availability of the play date right now. So they're selling like they're already sold out of their first batch of order, oh you know, like, so yeah. if you're ordering now, you're not going to get it till yeah. next year. That's just how it is. Um, really? Wow. But, okay. You know, it's good news for the system, but yeah, I mean, sucks if you really want to play it. Yeah. I, I don't even know if we're still in that whole like global supply chain uh, shortage yeah, sure. situation, yeah. right? But we, we seem to have not come out of it. So that must be mm -hmm. impacting this a little bit as well. Everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Well, uh, I cannot wait to, even if I don't maybe buy one or get one until next year, I, I am thinking up game ideas for the play date already. So amazing. Uh, Let's build something. Right. <laughs> oh my God. Let's build something. Me and Jess are going to build a game. We're going to talk about it in secret and then we'll surprise mm -hmm. launch it to everyone else. But if you're listening or watching, you have good ideas for games for the play date. You just want to share it with us. You can send your email. Send us an email at podcast at engadget.com. All right, I think that's a good point to stop before we go yes. into other news. This sounds like so much fun. And even just Ugh. talking about it, I heard the joy radiating through. Yeah. It's no, I, a lot of fun. Truly stuff. Well, it's it. also just me and Jess talking is just pure joy. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> I'm having the best day. Oh my God, me too. Oh my God. Sorry, I something fell. <laughs> my hair clip fell. Anyway, do we have questions? Uh, yeah, so chat, we can do a little bit of uh, Q&A right now about the play date specifically. I wanted to hear from Jess a little bit, like, can you call out a couple specific games that you liked? Yeah, Spell Courts. That's the one that I call out in the review. I mean, it's very much up my alley. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like magic stuff. And, mm, um, me too. Yeah, so it's it's this like really actually kind of dense game where you're just this person making potions and you have an email system where people send in orders and you get reviews after you make your potions and send them out. And there's mm. a there's a whole like spell book. And then just like you were saying about stirring, like the stirring right. motion with the crank. So you have to make potions. So you have to like smash little coffee beans with the D-pad and then grind them up with the crank. And, oh. or like chop, chop, chop with the crank and line up, yeah. line up the angles. It's really fun. I think it's a really smart, like just intro to the play date. It kind of uses everything and there's an accelerometer in the play date. So like you can oh, tilt cool. it and you mm -hmm. can, you can actually set the whole system to be played upside down uh, for accessibility stuff or just uh. to mess around with it. Like you can, you can totally flip it. The screen re responds. So there's a lot I of stuff, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned accessibility. I'm suddenly wondering, like, maybe part of that flipping has to do with enabling easier left-handed play. I don't know if, you know what I mean? Maybe. I mean, I think that would be tough because the screen yeah. would be at the bottom. Exactly. But you can plug it into your PC and then use a traditional gamepad or keyboard to play games on Playdate because the, it'll okay. show up on your screen and it'll be real time. And you can stream from there too. So Twitch, YouTube, there you go. Oh, shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, uh, I wanted to point out that Mark Dell in the chat teased the, was teasing you by saying, just use this, any excuse to talk about the Vita, which you know what? Fair. Do. Go talk about and it I if you want continue. to. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Vita means um, life. And Get over it. <laughs> uh, also want to welcome back, uh, one of our, f just the more outstanding usernames we've seen in this live chat. I can poop twice a day. Yay. Hey, welcome back. It's good <laughs> to see you are back to regularity. Yes, I was so excited to see poop twice a day. We... Please come back. I, I know that Thursday mornings might be bad for you, but um, just like pop into the chat and uh, gr just grace us with your name. Oh, man. Hi, I also that audio isolated. Which, <laughs> no, that just, part? Uh... <laughs> where you're just like, I love poop twice a day. Love. Yeah. We do. Yeah, we love to poop twice a day. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh... <laughs> Hi also to Jason Kwa and uh, Rob Lang Lee, who also joined us on the chat. Um, just, you know, everyone has these feels about, about the play date. I love it. Yeah. I wonder, does anyone in chat actually have an order coming? Hmm. Oh, it sounded yeah. like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, if anybody actually has a play date coming to them, please send us an email at podcast at engadget.com. Uh, we would like to talk to you. 
um, maybe off the uh, podcast, maybe on the podcast. Um, mm -hmm. It would be cool to, uh, I don't know, have a uh, like video demonstration or something. We'll, we'll figure something out. No promises. Well, we'll figure stuff out. Uh, but I can put twice a day has a good question. Is the only color available yellow? It seems like mm -hmm. yes is the answer, right? Yes, correct. Gotcha. It's a good yellow, though. It's cute. Yeah, it's uh, almost like a Game Boy yellow. A little brighter than like the Game it's Boy. a Pikachu yellow. Exactly. Yeah. I was about to say yellow. Pikachu yellow. Yeah, yeah thank it you. Is, for sure. Like, what's the Pantone value for Pikachu? Because like that definitely mm. exists now. Sounds oh, like I'm something sure, right? someone else can look up. I want to yeah. say <laughs> that Mark Dell is in the first batch of uh, of a uh, Playdate orderers. <laughs> nice, good work, Mark. So, Very nice. Yeah. Priorities. Um, Exactly. And Mark says that they're, uh, he's going to make a so-called stupid game, quote, stupid game for it, for sure. I'll I look it. forward. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will buy one to play your game, Mark. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, and I was saying in the chat that, uh, so I ordered the one of the new M1 MacBook Pros uh, at the end of March. And so I was supposed to get it like today or something between the 14th and today and i got a message saying uh that it was going to be delayed for a month um a little while ago so that's just goes to show you that like if apple who has unlimited money to put towards supply chain can't get their like premier product out then it makes total sense that the play date was would be delayed for a year or so mm -hmm. we'll look at the ps5 situation still for yeah, a lot of still people. still it's very still. hard still yeah when was the ps5 released again this is like two years ago like i swear <laughs> like 2020 seriously. definitely yeah, so 2020. one and a half yeah 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 it's ridiculous yeah insane I can only imagine that like multiple colorways for the play date are going to like that might be a like reannouncement, you know, like once they have stock or something, they'll try to get like another PR pop by saying like, here we have like four more colors or something. The Game Boy color. I mean play date color. Yeah, yes. it'll it'll I mean there's so much opportunity for that, right? Not only for upgrading the actual like hardware itself, but just aesthetically. Yeah. Oh, I would love, what color do I want? Pink, pink. <laughs> A deep purple. All right, I think we can move on, uh, yes. you know, to the rest of the show because we don't want to take up too many people's time. Mm -hmm. um, so let's move on and keep your questions coming in. We'll, we'll come back to them in a bit. All right. Okay, ben, I'm ready? ready when you are. Cool. I have too many windows open, so alt tabbing is really just not working for me right now. <laughs> okay, great. That's your life, I feel M like. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to some other news this week. It's been a surprisingly pleasant week of news barring, you know, the, the war and Elon Musk. And if you're able to compartmentalize some of that stuff, there's actually been some interesting news this week, starting with Samsung announced that it's making a Pokemon themed Galaxy Z Flip 3. This is the foldable candy bar style phone that's like a like a razor style flip phone. Um, and yeah, there's basically Samsung's making a whole bundle of accessories and the the phone itself has like a different design on it it looks basically like a pokeball but like a like a rectangular yeah. version of it first jess have you seen the pictures of this thing yeah i mean i'm looking at them now too and it's just like i love this this stuff this is oh, ridiculous man. and so cute and how fun oh my gosh <laughs> we were just talking about the play date and you know in in earlier part of this show we said the play date the play date basically is what a pikachu yellow right and so we're looking yes. at now an actual <laughs> pokemon version of a phone and it so this thing comes with a bunch of accessories with uh, a pikachu picture case a custom pack a pokemon custom pack a pikachu clear cover set so i believe this is something you snap onto the phone it comes with a pokemon pouch with a lanyard 
strap, a Pikachu keychain, a Pokeball stand, and then, you know, of course, it's not just about the hardware. The phone itself will have Pokemon-tuned uh, ringtones, themes, and wallpapers. Uh, this does not seem... The, the company hasn't announced any pricing uh, yet, but this is likely to be only available in Korea, uh, and it will drop in Korea on April 25th. So... I don't know. Am I flying to Korea? You know what I mean? Like, just go. Oh my God. Let's go. Let's hop okay, on a well, plane for some. Let's. <laughs> I am so down. I, my bags are packed. <laughs> <laughs> what concerts are, are we going to see while we're there? Let's go. Oh my God. I don't even. We got. Uh, we I, destroy I, Korea. <laughs> you just, you wait. Okay. I, I know, Ben, you moved this to the lower part of the show, but I'm going to talk about it now. Okay. Speaking of going to Korea and what bands we're going to see today, Apple announced, and Jess, this is something you might not be aware of yet that I no. chose to surprise you with. Today, Apple announced it's adding something to its Fitness Plus service. And what it is adding is in its dance workouts category, it's adding workouts set to the music of BTS. But not only that, okay. it is going to teach users the actual choreography yes. from yes. the videos. Oh yes. my God. That's all we want. That's all we want. That's all we want. That's all we wanted. Why did someone dance. put my face on the picture of BTS? Someone has Photoshopped me. Here That's on so the YouTube version of the Engadget <laughs> podcast, a picture oh, of no. Sherlyn over, I don't know the exact name of this band member, <laughs> but I have that floppy hairstyle. I, I am leaning, you know, sort of backwards in the middle of some grooves. Uh, I am BTS, basically, is what we're saying here. Anyway, what is going to happen here is next week, uh, Apple is adding new music to its Artist Spotlight collection featuring playlists from artists like ABBA, Queen, and BTS. And for each of these groups, it's adding you know workouts every week set to their music across categories like core, cycling, treadmill, hit, right? And just, just for the BTS part of it, it is going to also have at least one video coming that will teach you the moves from Mic Drop, uh, Dynamite, and oh, permission to dance, which is so aptly titled. So mm -hmm. holy moly, I I I'm I don't know about you, Jess. I we've talked about this enough that I think I know, right? I spend enough time watching YouTube dance tutorials, trying to teach, trying Breaking to learn the down. moves from right from like. For me, I'm more like Blackpink. I'm like, okay, Blackpinks, how do you like that? I've spent weeks learning and I've never really mastered it. But as someone who has used Fitness Plus dance classes before, I know for a fact that they've actually been fairly easy to pick up when okay. when Apple's trainers do like break down the moves and. You know, I was in a briefing and basically what happens is you're going to have the, the trainer um, in this workout session not only break down the moves for you, but also do them in like half time, double time, just so that it's slow enough for you to pick up the moves. Anyway, all I'm saying is Jess, will you Fitness Plus BTS with me? Oh, absolutely. I'll pick oh you up. God. I'll bring you a corsage. It, we'll go to dinner and then we'll dance all <laughs> night. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> It's a date. That's, is it's a date. <laughs> this is this is perfect. Like seriously, that's I I don't know why it's taken so long for us to yeah. get like an actual dance tutorial because yeah, it's there are people on YouTube that'll kind of break it down, but like this sounds awesome. <laughs> like give me more. Give me some mama moo dances. Give me, you know, Oh like, my I'm god. Ready. Oh my god. Yeah, I I straight up was just like I need Blackpink in there right now yeah. because yeah. Lisa and and yeah, mm -hmm. mama moo. I mean, we Jess and I are big All like K-pop fans <laughs> and that's why I really wanted to surprise you with this news. Um but also the other thing is these moves themselves. The reason it's I think actually possible this time for Apple to do this is because Apple and Apple Music have that relationship with BTS. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this choreography is actually sanctioned, like like BTS is aware that Apple is going to do this and teach yeah. the actual choreography from their videos, as opposed to, you know, some of the other dance workouts that are in Fitness Plus are moves that Apple's own trainers came up with or that sort of thing. So in this case, like it's, it's like an official thing, mm -hmm. um, which 
I don't know that anyone else, any other service might have the power to do if they weren't like freaking Apple. And, maybe and Google, right? Maybe. Like, and Google doesn't even have that sort of service. They don't have a video workout service that I know of. So mm-hmm. no. gosh, it's like, this makes a lot of sense. So my question again, other than will you do this with me, Jess, is A, I don't think you're an existing Fitness Plus user, right? No, I don't do a lot of Apple products. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But does this make you think you might be interested yes. in checking things out? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, there's a dog. My dog's going to bark. <laughs> She's growling quietly okay. in her bed. Okay, it's gone. Uh, no, oh, this okay. is like, this is, this is the thing that might get me, get me into that. Yeah. like, you know, I'm, I'm doing at home workouts already. Like yeah. maybe if I need to just try this one out for a little bit, this is the reason. Yeah. To do it. Yeah, for sure. I, I've been looking to mix up my routine a little bit. I want to bring in a bit more cardio and I've been doing fitness pluses, dance classes in the past. I can tell you that some of them, if you pick some of the higher intensity ones, um, they do get you sweating. They do get your heart pumping. So it is a decent workout. And I mean, I not only have been looking to bring this in, I also wonder if like, oh man, I had a thought that escaped me. I'm sorry, Jess. What were we talking about right before? Oh, oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the thing about fitness plus is that you're going to need to have an Apple watch, uh, to be able to even use fitness plus, which sucks. I know for, for the people Mm -hmm. who just want to watch these videos and learn Mm -hmm. that's tricky, but if I could use my Samsung galaxy watch, right. I'd be happy. Right. Exactly. And, and that's, the fact that you bring up Samsung is also interesting to me because, right, we just finished talking about Samsung. BTS has been an ambassador for the yeah. Galaxy Z Flip, and now they've got their like sanctioned choreography in Apple Fitness Plus. They're they're not playing games here. They're just they're gonna like whoever wants us take us. Like here, have have some BTS, have some joy in your life. I think yeah. I think that's the way to go, right? I'm like, really into that. I remember yeah. I bought these um the samsung earbuds that i'm that I'm wearing mm-hmm. the galaxy and right after i bought them bts announced their like special edition earbuds with samsung and i was like oh dang should have yeah. waited <laughs> i know well yeah. okay i i would have waited i will wait for the blackpink version i'm still like right i love i'm not army i'm blink that sort of thing we really want to get into the terminology yes. yeah um they just have insane dance moves as a girl that i'm like you know, really wowed by, um, but Very the pricing structure too for fitness plus, you know, obviously costs a little less than the C flip. Um, it's, I want to say about like nine ninety nine a month. I need to double check on that. It might be actually seven ninety nine a month. Um, so kind of the price of a Netflix subscription mm. in the olden days when Netflix wasn't like really incredibly expensive. Well, all um, those people that just canceled their Netflix subscriptions can just pop on over to Apple now. There we go. I mean, there you go. There you go. That's that's what that money should go to. Now, speaking <laughs> of Netflix, actually, mm-hmm. that's a like perfect time to talk about Netflix because why this week the company had its earnings, its first quarter of 2022 um, earnings reports dropped, and surprisingly or unsurprisingly, it actually lost a total of about 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter of the year, which like, holy crap. Like in the last few years throughout the pandemic, Netflix has been adding like millions of subscribers per quarter over the last year. So this is a very sharp decline. Um, Mm -hmm. It's interesting that like, I mean, obviously as you like keep gaining subscribers over time, it makes sense that like you hit hit a peak at some point and you're going to see that growth slow, but this, this is a big drop. Um, yeah. Now, one of the reasons you can think of probably that Netflix would be losing subscribers is that maybe people are going out more now that the pandemic is sort of, sort of maybe going away, right? Like we're not, we're never going to be too sure about saying that, right? But like, it might make sense to think that as people go out more, as we're not cooped up in our homes anymore, People might well, be canceling their subscriptions. I'm curious about that though, because other services haven't had the same decline, it seems, right? Exactly. 
Okay. Exactly. You're totally right. So on the earnings call, um, Netflix did say the pandemic wasn't really the reason. It only obscured the picture is, is what the quote is. Uh, and, and it said there were multiple other problems beneath the surface, including stiffer competition from services like Disney Plus and Prime Video, which, to be fair, yo, Apple mm-hmm. TV and TV Plus are both really bringing it. Mm-hmm. I might, I might give up uh, Netflix to stick to my Disney Plus for, for all my Marvel stuff. Mm-hmm. Apple TV's really been bringing some great series like Severance we've talked about on this show a lot. Um, so that's part of the reason. And then also, uh, you know, Netflix made a decision to halt service in Russia, which, mm. which brought that number down. It, it would have added 500,000 customers uh, if it hadn't halted service in Russia, but then overall it kind of mm-hmm. just lost 700. Hundred thousand after dropping its Russian base, obviously in response to the invasion of Ukraine. So, you know, not a yeah. great quarter for Netflix, but I feel like it's not really been a great quarter for the world either. Jess, do you have a Netflix subscription? I do. And I actually just looked at it uh, yesterday. I had to update some info and I've been a member of, like, of Netflix for 10 mm-hmm. years. Wow. It said since 2012. And I was like, damn, I've given them a lot. That's a long, oh, a long time. And like, I feel like, were they even around in 2012? Was that number right? Tell me. I don't know. (laughs) But like, I saw it and I was like, okay, I guess that's my life. Um, But this is the first time in a long time that I've been like, I don't know if I need Netflix, you know? Right. I watched Bridgerton. (laughs) Yeah. Like, um, yeah. But like, there are reality dating shows I like on it, but you know, I blow through those and then I'm done. (laughs) And yeah. uh, I may, I may have to, I do want to see severance. You know, I want to see some of these Apple shows that that, like mythic quest you showed me and I really loved. So yeah, this might be the time to make the switch. I don't know. So, so yeah, no, I mean, the 2012, I mean, Netflix definitely at least existed as like a DVD provider, right? So like maybe that was counted into your time, but I, I can't be entirely sure. Um, insane. Uh, our, our, live stream producer Julio Barrientos is saying that they have been a Spotify premium member since they believe 2010. Just just thinking about how long these streaming services have been around is insane. It's like, okay, they, they're not yeah. like startups anymore. And we haven't been thinking of them as startups for a long time, but it's they, they've got years under their belts. Um, mm-hmm. So this was interesting sort of bummer of a news if you were like a Netflix investor, I guess, but uh, it won't be gloomy for the long term. At least Netflix doesn't think so. It outlined a few efforts to maybe turn things around. It says it wants to improve the quality of its shows. Uh, Cool. (laughs) Profit from sharing, which is like there's an option for paid sharing in uh, Latin America. And then, you know, bring in more audiences from outside the U.S. where growth was a lot stronger because clearly the U.S. market is a little saturated for Netflix and it has to just make a lot more shows that tailor to people outside of America. Um, but this this sort of turnaround or these sort of efforts will take a long time, I think, to see results. Uh, Jess, I, are there any shows yeah, that you like mm-hmm. outside of the U.S. audience for Netflix? Oh, out, outside? What? Outside, outside of the US. US, right? Netflix original content uh, that is not maybe English language. Too Hot to Handle language. Latino. Yeah, Ooh. Elite. You? Too Hot to Handle oh. Latino. Um, okay. Oh, that was another. Yeah, there's a few. I watch a few like Spanish language pro- programs. Um, I love but, it. Yeah. But like, uh, oh, I had a point. It was, it's gone. It's fine. <laughs> Netflix doing, I'm sorry, doing shows outside of the US, profit sharing. Uh, oh, no, the- just like where the, does Netflix have to keep growing? Or can we just right, exactly. kind of sustainability and like exactly let's keep there for a while? Um, I you know this idea that sure they're losing subscribers, maybe they can now find a plateau where they where they can just sustain, which they've been doing fairly well. Right. It just seems like right. the, the focus is always on growth, and I don't know if that's actually the best goal. You know, corporate and capitalism—that's what it does, right? They're that's like just constantly looking for growth. Um, you know, I don't think if Netflix, like one day if Netflix like really has saturated the global market, they're going to be like, oh, so let's, let's see what Martians want to watch. You know what I mean? Like 
they're gonna like, how can we yeah how can we wring even more money out of everyone and how can we yeah. find yeah martians like great like the, yeah. i don't know it's just it's a silly concept to me but it's just capitalism <laughs> i i hear you a hundred percent but speaking of some of the shows that netflix wants to make in order to turn things around this might not be exactly the show that they're thinking of making but it was announced this week netflix and the oatmeal famed cartoon online comic creator, um, The Omeo is making a mobile game and TV series based on the Exploding Kittens game. Jess, are you familiar with Exploding Kittens? Definitely. I've Good. been on the internet for like a long time. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exploding Kittens, for those of you who are unaware, is a basically like a digital card game that you can download as an app for Android or iOS. Um, and it's sort of like Uno, but catty. Uh, is how I shall I shall put this. Um, the oatmeal. Um, go ahead. I was just like from the Cards Against Humanity era of like everyone kind of really into card games, and then this yes. like weird kind of edgy humor with it. So it's that's it. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Now, yes, it, I think on the surface, this game, this this like game and TV series on Netflix seem like they're capitalizing on a well loved online franchise, I guess. But it's not just that like this, this series has some serious names behind it. It's being produced by Mike Judge and Greg Daniels. We love Greg Daniels. I've spoken to Greg Daniels. Um, you know, the, one of the creators of The Office, Parks and Rec, Space Force. We've also got Mike Judge has been uh, involved in Beavis and Butthead, King of the Hill, Silicon Valley. Um, uh, and the oatmeal, you know, has co-written this with Shane Kozakowski, who's behind things like Archer, which just gets me really excited for the dialogue in this show. Yeah. Um, there's a great cast lined up. There's Abraham Lynn, Lucy Liu, uh, Sashir Zamata. There's just some not super familiar names, but Lucy Liu, holy crap, Tom Ellis is on here too. Um, you'll be able to play the game on Netflix next month, and then the show is going to arrive next year. The premise of the show is basically God and the devil are sent to Earth in the bodies of cats. Cool. I just, I just want to watch this. Like, <laughs> this premise with Archer dialogue, you know what I mean? Like, Archer style dialogue, I hope. Right. Whoa. I it's like you good know what? Omens Netflix meets Archer. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Netflix, you can keep my money for a little longer. You can <laughs> I will stay a subscriber Damn. just for a little while longer to see this one through. I mean, good for you, Netflix, and good for I guess fans of the oatmeal. Uh just I yeah. guess, are you stoked? Good for the oatmeal. Yeah, I mean, good for the oatmeal. You know, I love I love to see these like kind of kind of I feel like old school creators, internet people yeah. like kind of, you know, still doing it and making deals, making money like why not? And yeah, big names attached to this. Like the fact that there are so many big names gives me a little hope. Uh, maybe yeah. it won't be tragic. I just right. it's all just a little <laughs> ridiculous to me. I'm happy it's happening. Doesn't make me want to keep Netflix necessarily, but mm, it's fine. <laughs> fair point. Fair point. Yeah. You know, well, that's the thing too. Is like this is not only just going to be a TV series; it's also going to be a game on Netflix, right. right? And we know that Netflix has been trying to make games happen. Some of them are just like basic ripoffs of existing, very well-known classic games, right? But mm -hmm. part of this is probably Netflix's attempt to grow further right like if it can branch into other content like we've seen it do with choose your own adventure type shows or like games netflix yeah. is like struggling to keep this machine growing and yeah we'll see i guess it's it's really funny because it feels like it's very similar to when you see companies like playstation or microsoft play with a new idea you know like like this interactive video game thing that Netflix is doing, they don't quite yeah. know what they're doing with it yet. Like just like yeah. Sony didn't know what it was doing with like Gaikai when it bought like streaming services. It was like, ah, eh, mm -hmm. we'll try this. We'll see. Um, but maybe that can turn into something. It's just like right now, what Netflix is doing with games does not excite me at all. It just, yeah. you know, it, it feels very watered down, kind of shallow. Nothing yep. really has soul. So I'm yeah. waiting for that. Because I think yeah. they can get there. They have the money and the runway to get there um, mm -hmm. for now. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah. For now, the games that are on there just feel like ad-free versions of games I already play on Android 
apps, you know what I mean? So it's like, all right, well, I guess I'll play this little snake like game on here instead of downloading an ad riddled app for it. Sure. Um, Which is fine. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Um, we're going to move on to something that's a little less fun, I guess, which is, <laughs> but you know, probably good news for some of us. WhatsApp is adding an option to hide your last seen status from specific contacts. Uh, the company is currently beta testing the feature on Android and iOS. So for those of you who are not familiar, WhatsApp has this um, sort of status bar under your name where your contacts or people who have chatted with you when they open your chat window, they can see what time you were last seen. It'll say they're last seen at such and such a time. Currently, there are only two options for this. You can turn it off entirely or you can have it on display all the time for every contact. So it's nice that WhatsApp is considering this option for people who might want to hide their last scene or their, their last online time from, let's say, an abusive ex or like just any sort of uncomfortable prickly situation they might be in where they don't want to be stalked. Um, and, you know, the fact that it's only still in beta testing right now is not as exciting, probably, but hopefully this feature will roll out soon. I think it's a sound tool to yes. add, yes. right? Just like, I mean, do you use WhatsApp? No, but I use other apps that have similar, you know, like yeah, they're online, they've been online, this is when they were online. Like that's, it's a lot. <laughs> I turn yes. off my read receipts on my messages, you know, like straight yes. up, just, I don't need people to know when I'm typing necessarily. Yeah. yeah. Um, at least specific people, especially. Yeah. So I, I like exactly. That. Exactly. I do think that this hopefully pushes other apps that don't already do this to think about it. WhatsApp is one of the largest messaging apps around uh, in the world. So having this feature be something they integrate, um, hopefully pushes other people to do it. For example, like, I don't mind leaving people on red, right? Like, I'm just like, mm -hmm. cool. I saw, like, yeah. that in itself is a reaction. That in itself is a response. I don't want to deal Absolutely. with you, right? The tricky thing I see about this, and probably that's what what's one of the questions WhatsApp needs to wrangle with as a beta test this feature, is do you need to first add a person as a contact before you can limit what that person sees? Because that's how mm -hmm. some apps do blocking uh, for now. Like the I, like on iPhone, mm -hmm. if you want to block a number from texting or calling, you have to create a contact for them first and then block that contact, which I'm like, if it's a spam that. number, yeah. Why do I need yeah. to devote address book space to a person before I can block them? That doesn't make exactly. sense. So I feel like there's things WhatsApp needs to work out um, before we see this come out as a full-fledged feature. And hopefully someone on their team is listening and considers this and figure out a way to make it, you know, not just based on context yeah. in your phone book. Um, yeah. There you go. Honestly, I feel like that would be a simple fix. That's interesting that they make you do that. Huh? Right? Huh. I don't know. Yeah. We we Weird. we will have to see. But mm -hmm. uh speaking of interesting ideas. <laughs> <laughs> this week too. Oh my, I'm sure you've seen this. This week, uh, we saw that researchers in Japan have developed a set of electric chopsticks that they say can enhance the taste of salt. So, uh, okay. Yeah, I know. Right? So basically, this is a device that's attached to a wristband where, where there's a computer on your wristband. Uh, and then it will use electrical stimulation to transmit sodium ions from food to your mouth um no, uh, no the dude. idea i know <laughs> it makes me so uncomfortable disagree but the, i know the idea is that like if you can make food taste more salty it can reduce people's sodium intake okay. sure cool sure. uh or salt intake right uh the researchers have been saying that these chopsticks can enhance the perceived saltiness of low sodium foods by around 1.5 times cool i don't know about the electrical thing moving food to my mouth part of this though like how sure are how many people have been electrocuted in this process? I guess is my question. Um, and we, I guess, is this a problem that needed it? to be solved? That's all. It's like I get I, reducing sodium yeah. intake, I understand that, but yeah. is this really the way? I just yeah. don't, this doesn't do it for me. 
Like, right, we, we agree. High sodium intake is an issue. Sure. Cool. Sure. This is just a very unique way to think about solving the problem or at least alleviating it because people need to still taste salt instead of consuming it. Well, and, and I, so we're going to, yeah. I just wonder, like, is that that salt craving? Is it just the taste or is it actually like people craving salt? So they're still going to eat salt. Like, Actual I don't I salt. honestly yeah. don't know. Maybe they've done the research and this actually makes sense. But really yes, matter. just drink more water, guys. If you're craving salt, it's because your body wants water. Drink water. <laughs> Could be. I don't claim to know. Yeah, exactly. I don't claim to know all the food science. I will say that this device was, you know, announced in part by um, Meiji University professor Homei Miyashita. Uh, Miyashita also created like <laughs> a lickable TV uh, that was announced at the end of December last year. Uh, Cool. Well, <laughs> I gotta say, my TV is lickable. It just doesn't oh, taste okay. <laughs> cool. I don't know. Do you? I don't. Oh don't my ask. god. Okay. Don't ask. <laughs> we didn't talk about this last year, I guess, because it was released like two days before Christmas. I think everyone was on break. But yeah. a lickable TV that has a so-called taste synthesizer. No. Uh, built into like your screens. Uh, apparently, Miyashita didn't actually want this to be sort of a tool that everyday consumers can add into their TVs. He actually thought they would be for kooks and sommeliers to, to uh -huh. I guess, work around food creation or something. And then you can taste recipes from around the world while staying at home. That's not possible. It's not, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, you can mimic salt, but like you can't mimic uh -huh. the taste of beef bourguignon or whatever it is. Like uh -huh. all this fancy stuff. Like you can't food. <laughs> food isn't just about your like two dimensional taste, but situation. It's not like licking something can tell you yeah. all about a food thing, right? There's textures, there's like chewiness, there's like dry or moistness, right? And, and I, I mean, cool. I love laughing at stuff like this. Yes. Uh, it reminds me that there is still, you know, people who are trying to innovate in the world. Uh, but yeah, I, I, good luck to anyone beta testing these electric chopsticks that make food saltier. Because if you don't get electrocuted, kudos. Uh, yeah. Good for you. There we go. Tongue taser. It's just a tongue taser. It's fine. <laughs> tongue taser. <laughs> Let's move on to what we're actually working on. Jess, what have you been working on this last week or so? So Playdate was a lot of my time yeah. um, this mm -hmm. week. And, you know, we're coming up to a kind of dry summer for yeah. games. Um, okay. So, I mean, hey, in the chat, please let me know what you guys are looking forward to. Because honestly, mm -hmm. the slate's pretty, pretty thin. Um, okay. But that said, there's some like editorials and stuff that I'm kicking around. Um, because, hey, if I don't have to review a game, might as well write something worthwhile, right? So I love that. Tuned. Yeah, I love that. We'll stay tuned. Uh, meanwhile, I have been testing a bunch of fitness things out, uh, which explains why I tweeted recently that I love working out for work. It really, really is fun. Um, things like the Peloton Guide, things like um, some new fitness gadgets I can't really talk about just yet. You can stay uh -huh. tuned to Engadget for, for all of that info coming up. Uh, you know, next week or so. I did want to shout out what our teammates have been up to around Engadget. Sam Rutherford, senior editor, has been busy, busy, busy. I mean, first of all, he's attending the New York Auto Show or he's attended New York Auto Show covering it for us. Um, so you can check out some of his hands-ons. He uh, took a look at the Volkswagen ID Buzz as well as the Indy One, which is a something he described as, as part EV, part gaming pc uh, uh wow okay 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 yeah. let's i mean take a look take a look sure. and then sam is it lickable oh yeah and, oh, okay uh not that i know no. of no lickable games <laughs> but well you can feel it. free to lick the outside of that car all you want jess i'm not stopping you, you. uh 
<laughs> Sam me. also Sam also checked out the Logitech Lift, which is a vertical mouse that he describes as being, I guess, just for the rest of us, right? So a bit more accessible, not really targeted at any specific audience. Um, and I'm intrigued because I have like arm pain, a lot of back and arm pain because of my ergonomic setup. So, so that's something I would look into. Um, also from other people on the team, Igor uh, published a review of the Samsung Galaxy A53, which is Samsung's mid-rangey phone. Um, short story, he was hoping for it to be more than it was. Uh, and it's just not really much of an upgrade. There you go. And then Valentina Palladino, our commerce editor, published a buying guide to you know the best webcams you can get so if you're you know i know jess you're you were just talking about that at the start of this show um mm -hmm. and who else anyone else out there looking to start their own twitch channel or youtube hustle this might be a good one mm -hmm. everyone needs a webcam nowadays a good a good webcam exactly that's all i'm saying all right now, after we're all done working, obviously we want to relax. Just tell me what you would recommend I do watch or listen to uh, to, to relax. Pop culture reference? Okay, yes, I can girl. do that. Yes. Um, how about this wonderful show? You may have heard of it. It's called The Courtship. <laughs> uh, did I talk about this <laughs> already? Did I already No, you talk didn't. About this? You've just okay. told me a little bit. Yeah. Because I guess it would have been like a few weeks ago I was on. I hope not. Either way, I'm talking about it again if I have. Um, yeah, The Courtship is a reality show. It's like The Bachelor meets Bridgerton. It's it's a bunch of like mostly American people in London somewhere, I don't know, UK somewhere, in a castle with a butler living like they're in Jane Austen's fantasy world, uh, Regency era England. And there's a woman they're all trying to date and it's hilarious and weirdly dramatic. And they, they dance while doing the farewell while she's like eliminating one of them, they have to do this awkward dance in front of her whole family. Amazing. It's, amazing. it's ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> that, I mean, you've shown me some of this uh, recently and, and it's incredible. I yes. was hoping to like, if I was ever out of ideas, recommend <laughs> this on the show and just be like, just recommend this. But here you go. No, this is a very interesting like dating show. Um, so yeah, no people, where, where can people watch it again? So it's on, I watch it on uh, YouTube TV. I think it's on mm -hmm. USA. So wherever mm -hmm. you can watch USA shows, I guess. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Well, for me, uh, my recommendation this week, I am sure you've heard of a little TV show called Moon Knight. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have you watched any of Moon Knight yet? No, but my little brother is obsessed with it. So I am obsessed. This is Disney Plus. This is the latest Marvel MCU show that features Oscar Isaac as the titular Moon Knight. The premise is incredible. Uh, he is basically one person, no, two people inhabiting one body. One of these people happens to be an avatar to an Egyptian god. Uh, cool. I just, I love the lore here. I love it. I, I used to be like such a huge fan of the mummy series of films and right. Yes. And oh yes. my gosh, this, this basically is just kind of diving deeper into that, that world, right. Where you have the gods, the like, and then, the, you know, the superheroes in this situation are their avatars that act on their behalf and, and, you know, occasionally are imbued with their powers, but then the gods are also around. It's just, it's that, it's not just that. It's also the idea of like the two characters that Oscar Isaac plays inhabiting that one body. And so they're like fighting to take over each other. And so a lot of great acting on his part. I'm mm -hmm. impressed with his like British accent that he puts on for one of the characters. <laughs> uh, I know not all British people will be just because apparently some of the phrasing and the structure of the things that he says are, are maybe melodically a little off, but damn, this has been like a great show. Jess, does your brother tell you why they love it? So actually my brother and my dad watch it together. Oh. Um, and my dad is a, a mental health professional. So like he has usually a, an issue with shows or any media that right. like portrays kind of multiple personalities or schizophrenia. Yes. It's, it's always like kind of offensive to him. He loves this mm -hmm. show though. He thinks wow. they, they've handled it very well. He's actually really into it. Uh, I was surprised to hear that. So, I mean, from that and from you telling me it's worth a watch, I think, I'm actually going to watch this one. 
Here we go. I tell me what you think because I have been enjoying it so much. Mm-hmm. I every new episodes drop every Wednesday. There's about four episodes available right now, um, so there's a ways to go. But I think I haven't been as intrigued by a Marvel TV series on Disney Plus since Loki. Mm. It's Which maybe I not. Oh crap, girl! I okay. don't watch a lot of <laughs> Disney. I don't watch a lot of Marvel. I know. Like I hear you. I, just, I, just I hear you. I'm, I think I might be one of the bigger like Avengers people on the team, mm-hmm. you know, than, than others. Um, but no, I, Loki was amazing. And I'm not sure if I will say that Moon Knight is on that level yet, but as a ride, it's thrilling. It's, it's better, I think, than Cap and, you know, Falcon and the Winter Soldier right now. Mm. Um, maybe, maybe even better than WandaVision. And that's a lot coming from me because yeah. I love Vision so, so, so much so anyway watch yeah. moon Knight is what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> wonderful all right we can wrap ben for we can do the outro yes okay <clears throat> well that's it for the episode this week everyone i hope you enjoyed it uh our theme music is by game composer dale north our outro music is by our very own terence o'brien the podcast is produced by ben elman you can find Jess online at at Jess Condit on Twitter and Jess L Condit on Instagram. If you want to send me or Jess ideas for playdate games that you want to make, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Sherlyn Lowe. Email us your thoughts at podcastandengadget.com. Leave us a review on iTunes and subscribe on anything that gets podcasts. Because we don't mention Spotify so much anymore. Oh, uh, we just straight up don't. It's good. <laughs> uh, All so right, I think I we have twice a day in the chat mm-hmm. was asking, "Is the Moon Knight actor Oscar Isaac?" Yes, the Moon Knight actor is Oscar Isaac. Mm-hmm. He's so good in it. Oh my god, amazing. That's cool. Yeah. Oscar Isaac has been having a really good. Honestly, he's been having a really good like last five to eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, he's. I mean, if you want to just forget X Men Apocalypse happened, he's just had a really good career. <laughs> like, hey, he still made was... money off of that. That's fine. Oh, I enjoyed that show. That was, Don't yeah, even get me wrong. Like, really recognized him. Was it mm-hmm. like Inside Lewin Davis or something? Or mm-hmm. in- like, sorry, the first big movie that he was in. Oh, I don't know. Like. I remember him in from Star Wars. Like I think yeah, once he was where, in Star yeah. Wars, then he entered kind of the public discourse a bit more. For sure. Yeah, I think that uh, like puts him in at least like a minus list, if not like true A list. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, th- oh, lots of people so- were reacting to the chopsticks. Lots of people. <laughs> I'm just catching up, but man, I love it. Our live chat is popping mm-hmm. today. A lot of people. Abbott Elementary. Do you see yeah. that one? Someone's calling out Abbott Elementary season one. Uh, I watched that on Hulu. It's very funny. It's a little sitcom. It's like Parks and Rec, but in an elementary school. It's nice. It's really funny. Yeah. Nice. Um, I think when we were talking about the uh, Pokemon edition of the Galaxy Z Flip, people were just like, "We they want the Pika earbuds. They want the Pikachu earbuds. Um, yeah. Mark Dell asked, can Jess and Cher just compete on two-player BTS Beat Saber? I mean, yeah. I mean, we don't have to compete. Yeah. We can play together. We can just play. I <laughs> I have downloaded the BTS pack on Beat Saber. It might be one of the only packs I actually have. Um, mm-hmm. So I love it. It's really good. Yep. Um, but it's not the actual dance. It's not the actual dance. Not exactly. Exactly. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> I felt like of all the people who would get this, just you would have gotten this Apple story alongside me like instantly. Yeah. So, like I was like, I want to surprise you with it. Yeah, I know. Um, you said you had a surprise for me. I was like, ooh. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one, right? Okay, <laughs> great. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> okay. Uh, any, uh, Ben, was there anything that, you know, you wanted to highlight? Yeah, we had a couple of comments from Marco Chavain, uh, mm-hmm. who said in relation to the Netflix segment, that one of the reasons they might be losing subscribers is that they keep on canceling good content after one to two seasons, like the Mm. OA. Um, Mm. People are still annoyed about the OA to this day. Um, I mean, people were kind of annoyed about Sense8, and then Sense8 came back for a movie. Um, Mm -hmm. What was it? Uh, They kind of unceremoniously chucked out Glow 
and there were mm. a lot of glow fans and like i think the last season of glow was like all written and everything mm -hmm. and then like i think they were about to shoot it and the pandemic happened and they were like oh you know what we're just not gonna do this excuse me wow Netflix does have a bad track record with some of its like fan loved shows. So I know it's, 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 if, if they would just bring back some of these shows, I'm sure they would see some positive change. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Really quickly, Jason Tobin, uh, very much earlier in the chat, asked about the play date. What are the connectivity features like? Is there Wi Fi, Bluetooth, mm -hmm. even NFC? Uh, no NFC that I know of, but there's definitely Wi-Fi. It connects to Wi-Fi. It's so funny because it's it's such a small, light thing right. that it doesn't feel like it should be able to connect to Wi-Fi. It like just it right. feels like a it feels like a piece of paper. I swear. Um, yeah. So yeah, it connects to Wi-Fi. Bluetooth connectivity. I wasn't able to try it because um, it wasn't mm. like live for review right. period. But right. I think it's live now. If not, it's coming soon. So Bluetooth gotcha. is definitely a thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, ben, sorry if I interrupted. Oh, no. Um, I'm also kind of curious, like, what the experience of putting in the Wi-Fi password on the play date was. Because, it's so like, cute. Really? <laughs> yeah, okay. I actually, I forgot about this until you just said that. The, the way that they do the keyboard is with the crank and there's like two rows of capital small lowercase and you can just go over and you crank and you select. It's so easy and so cute and makes a lot of sense for maybe not crank face, you know, interfaces as well. That's all I'm saying. But that's a like really good companies, really good design companies will put thought into every yes. aspect of interaction design. Yes. And so this was a way of like, the first thing you were going to do is probably connect this thing to Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, let's get you used to the crank immediately. That's yep. so smart. The whole intro is like, hey, pull out the crank, use it. And like, and then you get to do the whole Wi-Fi thing. And it like, it truly was, I remember like putting in the Wi-Fi and being like, damn, this is really smart. And I just like, I like good design like that. I like when it, it all makes sense in a very contained package. So, so this does that. Yeah. Um, when we were talking, I guess, about flying to Korea to watch Korean oh to buy the Pokemon Z yes. flip and also yes. check out some concerts there were a lot of fantastic reactions uh Chris Angelo Perez said that is the game sure and just fly to Korea yeah a play date game yeah. where we just fly to Korea and, and see concerts and, and, and see buy concerts phones. <laughs> yeah you buy Pokemon the, phones you use yeah. the crank to navigate through the crowd to get to the front of the yes. stage so yeah. like yeah. navigating to meet your through idol the, yeah yes. navigating through the crowd is a little bit like a frogger like style game or something yeah. sure uh, and then, and then, like, yeah, use that to do dance moves or whatever. I hear you. This Chris Angelo Perez just on point with the game ideas. This today, first with the cooking mama, and now with this. Okay, awesome. Uh, I can poop twice a day. Yay! Was like, I will go with you too. I'm like, yeah, all of us would go to Korea now if we could. I don't know what the COVID situation is like right now over there. I heard it wasn't that great a while ago, um, but there you go. Yeah. Um, and then I think people are just talking about how much Jess and I love each other, which is true. That's just facts. Like, you can't argue true. with it. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you can uh, feel it. Philip Vaughn just said in the chat, TV recommendations, Picard and the new Wonder Years. Uh, mm. I've heard only a little bit about the new Picard. I think that you probably have to be like very into Star Trek in order to really appreciate the new Picard. I don't think that's going to like get any new fans, but I like the idea of the new Wonder Years. Um, Blackish just ended, so this could be, um, you know, a new uh, thing if you like, um, you know, family comedies um, with an African American cast. Um, what else? What else? Oh, you were talking about Ab Abbott Elementary. I like Abbott mm -hmm. Elementary a lot. I like Quinta, um, who is the creator and star of that. She's so cute. Um, <laughs> I like that she cast Zach Fox in an episode um, because if you're really into kind of like the same music I'm into, you would notice that Quinta was also in the music video for um, the song Dragon Ball Do-Rag by uh, Thundercat. The okay. music video for Dragon Ball Do-Rag was directed by um, Zach Fox. It all ties up in a bow. 
It's like everyone um, in Hollywood knows each other or something weird. Or yeah, certain generations <laughs> of people know no, each other sure. and tend to like each other. That's really cool. Yes. Well, it's just like creative, successful people being creative and successful together. And I love that. Okay, so um, I think we got one last kind of techie question. Do you know sure. what the Playdate display color bitrate is? That is so I, uh, techie. It's okay, bit so rate? it's well, yeah, it's and one but that's bit. The it's one bit. That's yeah. what it says on the website. Um, it's <laughs> I think two four hundred by two forty. I don't know. But I don't know, man. It might be but so. Like, the more standard sizes would be two forty by four eighty. If we're talking about resolution, I don't think. But bit yeah, rate's not resolution. Yeah, bit rate's not resol. This is just what it says on the site. It's like it's mm -hmm. one bit, and I don't know bit rate. And yeah, and also I'm not sure. I hopefully somebody could explain it. Send us an email at podcast at Engadget. Um, would color bitrate figure in if you have a monochrome display? Because no? that might yes. be asking like an apples and oranges kind of question. Yeah. Right. Um yeah, I don't know. so I'm just gonna quickly run down some more comments or questions before we sign off. We did start late today and we're you know coming up on our end time very soon. So uh there was some love for ABBA when we were talking about Fitness Plus, which yes, I'm a big ABBA fan. Um and some of the workouts that Apple has shown me so far that use ABBA music, gosh, they look so good. If you're a theater kit, you'll love it. Um uh, was there anything, Ben, that you wanted to make sure we got in before we wrapped? Um, nothing other than the fact that I can poop twice a day. Yay, says, hope you guys have a poopy day. And in Love that it. case, I think it's a wish that we have a good day. So I think yes. that's where we're going to cut it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, thank you, everyone, for joining. I mean, the old, the new the in-betweens <laughs> we, we appreciate you all for being here quick roll call shout out uh thanks d-man mark adele uh, rob langley chris angelo perez with the ideas axbx declan flynn rob langley um that gabra is here too gosh there was just so many of you um today we're very very happy you were able to join us yeah um philip philip vaughn uh gulshan sharma um who else uh bryant mitchell oh i see um, drew karmokar yay hey. yeah drew karmokar marco uh chavane thank you to everybody uh, thanks also i can to poop twice a day team. yay too yes. never forget <laughs> buddy 305 love but also that yes okay so thanks everybody and thanks to our video team which is julio barrientos and luke brooks thank you to luke specifically for making that fun <laughs> photoshop of sherlin's face on bts <laughs> Um, if oh you've stuck around God. this long, <laughs> if good. you've stuck around this long, you know that we live in a world of algorithms. You understand that better than the average person, probably. So rate us five stars on iTunes. Rate us five stars on your favorite podcast platform. Tell a friend. Tell a family member. Tell anyone. If you've watched this stream, just download the episode. Helps us with the numbers. Give us like two boosts in the numbers, the YouTube views and the download numbers. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Peace.